All right, students, welcome to the tutorial on using PhotoP for overlapping transparency layers. I chose PhotoP because it's a lot like Photoshop and it's online and it's available to all of you on your computers at home. So here we go. To start, you're gonna go to open from computer. Now remember how I told you to um, collect a whole bunch of images? So I collected a bunch of images and I just put them in a folder called Project One. And I've got lots of images in here, lots of extra stuff. Okay, so here are some images that I collected. Remember we wanted to collect images of our environment, things that would give us a sense of, of place, of presence and community. So I'm gonna collect a whole bunch of these pictures. To do that, I'm gonna hold down my control button. I'm gonna click on some images of some playing cards, because I've been playing a lot of games, mostly solitaire. I'm gonna click on a few of the images that I have of my uh, art that I've been doing while I'm stuck at home. I've got some pictures I took outside of some flowers. I'm just gonna collect up a bunch of different images. And then I'm gonna open those in PhotoP. Okay, once you have all your photos uploaded in PhotoP, we're gonna play around with layers. Just like in Photoshop, the layers menu is right here. So I'm gonna go in, this is the first layer I'm gonna play with some playing cards. And I'm gonna take the background out. So I'm gonna click on this quick selection tool. It's just like in Photoshop. And I'm gonna take out the background because it's kind of boring. So I'm gonna click around here in the space. And just like in Photoshop, you can use plus and minus to make sure that you're getting the right materials, the right things. I want all of my cards selected. And you notice how the, um, Selection is also going around the background here. That's good. I wanna make sure that the background is selected. So I have the dots all the way around the background. Now, just like in Photoshop, I'm gonna protect my background layer just in case I make a mistake. So I'm gonna duplicate the layer and I'm gonna turn the visual off on the background layer. Make sure you're on the second layer. Once you've got your background all surrounded by selection, I'm gonna push the backspace tool. Now you see I've got this grid. The grid means that it's transparent. So it's like a window there. There's a few spots that I missed. So I'm gonna to go to select, deselect. I'm gonna pick up an eraser tool and I'm just gonna erase out those last little bits. Nobody's perfect and you're never gonna get everything. So have your background out of there. Okay, now I've got my layer and you can see my background layer is turned off. So I'm gonna go into my layer and I'm gonna add some adjustments. In Photoshop, the adjustments come up above, but here we're gonna use this button at the bottom. We're gonna use hue saturation and we're gonna fiddle around with our picture and I really wanna mess it up. I'm gonna make it really vibrant I'm gonna change the colors into something really crazy. So um, I'm gonna go purple on this. So now I've got purple cards, pretty cool. Now, if I don't want these two, if I don't want my hue and saturation to affect my other layers underneath, I'm gonna connect it to my layer. So I'm gonna click on hue saturation, hold down the shift key and click on layer. And then when I right click, I have the choice to merge the layers. I'm gonna merge my layers. Now that purple layer is all by itself. I've still got my background if I need it, but I'm gonna turn that off. Now I'm ready to add some other layers. So I'm gonna click through my tabs at the top that have my different images. So here's a nice one of some art that I was working on. I just did this with color pencil and marker and stuff. But it was kind of fun and that's what I've been doing a lot of. So it gives you a feeling of what my life is like right now. So I'm gonna use the select tool and I'm gonna select a rectangle of that image. Then I'm gonna copy it. So I'm gonna go to edit, 
copy or you can do control C, whichever one works for you. Now I'm going to go back to my card image. Here it is. And I'm going to go edit, paste, or control V. And as you see, it put that next layer, it's a whole new layer that is that drawing that I made. I can move it around. And I can also, using this select tool up here, I can make it larger. So I'm going to fill my whole space. Now, I'm not holding the shift key down, so I'm stretching it, you can see. But if I hold the shift key while I move it, it doesn't stretch. It stays the same proportions, and I kind of like that better. There you go. Now this layer, I kind of want to fiddle with too. So I'm going to say I'm done moving things with this check mark here. And I'm going to go to my adjustments layer. And I'm going to fiddle with the hue and saturation again. It's pretty well saturated, but just in case, I'm going to really brighten it up. Now, I have purple on that one. I'm going to go with a kind of look at that beautiful green. So I can fiddle with this all I want. It changes the different colors. It adjusts them like a filter. That's kind of how to go with it. So what did I say? I wanted green and that right there. Okay. Now I can also make it lighter. I'm not going to do that for this one though. I want it nice and bright. And uh, I can even make it more saturated, crazier, brighter color. All right. So fiddle around with these until you get some kind of crazy stuff happening here. And then I'm going to say I'm done. But again, watch what happens. If I turn this layer that we're looking at off, you can see that my purple cards look blue. That's because this hue saturation layer is covering all of the ones underneath. So it's adjusting the colors in this layer too. I don't want that. I just want it to mess with my layer one. When I merge the layers, that's only affecting that layer. So if I turn it off now, you can see these are purple again. Now, I'm going to slide this hue saturation layer from my layer two. I'm going to put it underneath the other layer. So now it looks like I'm playing cards on my crazy background. Kind of fun. To make this blend together now, I want to connect these two layers and not just look like a sticker on top of a background. So I'm going to go to my layer that's on top, and I'm going to play with the opacity. That means how transparent it is. So I'm going to click on here, and I'm going to slide this around. What I want to do, I want to get a point where I can still see the cards, but I can start to see my background too. So it's kind of like I can see through the sticker. In that way, it, it connects this. It's not as much a sticker as it was before. And I can even mess with the opacity of this layer since it's not the background layer. You can see the grid showing through. And basically what that's doing is it's making this see through. The grid will not print on the picture later. Let's move it back up to 100% because I want to put a third layer on here. But before I do that, I'm going to turn my picture. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. So I'm going to go to Image, Transform. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And you got to pay attention to these arrows so that it's going the right way. I want it to go clockwise. So I'm going to click clockwise. And there you go. Now my picture has rotated 90 degrees. Now I'm going to add another picture to it. Let's see if I can find the one I want. Here it is. Now this is not my house, even though we're talking about our houses here. This is actually from the Independence Hall in Philadelphia, but I love the way it feels like you're inside looking outside. And that's kind of how I feel right now, stuck in my house. So I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to select the whole thing, and then I may mess with it later. I'm going to go edit, copy, like I did before. I'm going to go to where I've been working on my crazy, crazy page. And I'm going to click on the top layer just so I end up adding my next layer on top of that. And then I'm going to go Edit, Paste, or Control V. Now, as you notice, that picture is a lot smaller. So I'm going to click on the arrow tool. And I'm going to hold the Shift key down. 
so that my image stays the right proportions. Now these kind of windows, interestingly, are called Palladian windows. They're very famous windows, especially in the very first part of our country. A lot of rich people used these windows in their houses and buildings. Um, so they're kind of an interesting feature. Now you notice when I stretch this really large, it looks kind of hazy and it's got these dots and pixels. That's gonna work okay for this project. But if you were doing something else, you might not want that to happen. So once I get it all set the way I want it, I feel like I can make it even bigger. I know it's kind of crazy, but I'm just holding that shift key down and stretching it. I just want those windows. And I probably could have just cropped it when I did my selection. I could have selected a smaller selection, but I kind of like this texture that's happening here. So normally I would hate that, but this noise is good for this picture. So once I get it set where I want it, I'm gonna click on the check mark to say, yep, that's where I want it. And then I've got that layer over here. Let's fiddle with the hue and saturation on this last layer. So I'm gonna click on this, hue and saturation. I'm gonna make the saturation really, really vivid. And then I'm gonna change the hue. Now let's see, I've got a purple layer. I've got a kind of red layer. Let's see if I can get something in there. That's a pretty crazy look. All right, so now, if you notice, if I turn off this one, now all my colors have changed again. That's because this layer is affecting all the layers underneath it. I don't want that to happen. I just wanted to mess with this top layer. So I'm gonna hold the shift key down again, click on this layer, and when I right click, I'm gonna merge the layer. Okay, now I'm down to three layers. My window layer, my card layer, and my background layer. But I can't see these yet because I need to adjust the opacity on my top layer. Make sure you're on the top layer. And now, I'm going to merge all of my layers so that I can see a little bit of everything inside my layers. I'm gonna move this with my hand. And I'm gonna go back a little bit. Oops. So, I kinda don't like the fact that there's all this wasted space up here. So the last step might be to edit by cropping my image. If I do that, I could get right down in here just to the most exciting part. Come on, crop tool. Now, I've got a pretty interesting picture going on here. You can still see the cards, you can still see the artwork, and you can see the window. So I've combined three things that I'm doing, looking out the window, playing my cards, and fiddling with my art. If you want to go in and fiddle around some more, you can adjust the layers using the filters, giving them different textures and things. But for this project, you've got three transparent layers, and you've used the adjustment of the hue and saturation. So. I'm ready to save it. I'm gonna to go to File, Export As, and remember for this project, save everything as a JPEG. So here you go.